Sorry? Yeah. Now, let's continue now our lesson module for lesson one. Now, we talked about the linear function, and we said that the linear function has a lot of characteristics. One of them, I want to determine if it is increasing, decreasing, or constant. I want to determine the end behavior. I want to determine or identify the zeros and determine the extreme values, or that means the minimum and the maximum values. If I identify these characteristics, so identify the characteristics of this will be the characteristic of the linear functions. We talked about the functions and we say that it could be increasing, decreasing, or constant. We said that the, the increasing function is going to be from the left to right. So, so the is from left to right. The has positive slope. Right, if you have an equation, f of x equals 3x plus 5, look at the coefficient of x. If the coefficient is positive, it means the slope is positive, it means the function will be increasing. So the increasing function will be, has a positive slope, will be start from the left to right, as we said and the last one that is when the input increase the output increase or when the input decrease the output decrease both of them have the same direction input output when they are increased they are honestly the most common case which is increasing these are the properties of the increasing function the slope is positive go from the left to right and we say that if the input increase the output will be increased and i give you an example like the tall of the tree or the length of the tree when it is one year its length was one meter when it's increased to be two years the length will be two meters so as the year passed the length will be increased this is an example for the increasing function is it right is it uh, clear okay. now and we talked about the decreasing function. Decreasing function, if we have an functions like this, if the input increase, as an example, the output will decrease. Like, as we said, like the battery of the mobile, or when I take the mobile, when it's full charged, the battery was 100. When I use it after five hours, the life of the battery will be decreased until it tell me that the battery is, uh, is empty. So this is an example of the, the decreasing function. When the input increase, the output is decreasing. Look right here, when the input is increasing, the output now is decreasing. This is an example of the decreasing function. It goes from right. To left and the slope is negative. Like if you have f of x equals negative 2x plus 5 over 2 as an example, look at the coefficients of x. The coefficients is negative, so that means the slope is negative, that means will be decreasing. Do you have any question? This was we talked about them before. Now we stopped at the constant function. What do I mean by the constant function? It's a state. Exactly. Like if the function is constant, so the output values are the same for the all input values. Like if I say it like can you repeat the We talk about them last uh, on Monday. Uh, the one that Yes, this that how the function will come if it is like.
like f of x equals negative 2x plus 5 over 2. Since the coefficient is negative, so that means the slope is negative, so that means the function will be negative. That's it. Now, the constant function. The constant function, it means, like, as an example, when I am a teacher, when I came at 7 a.m. or at 11 a.m. or at 10, there is a great difference. Yeah, like me. But I mean that the output is the uh, the input is the output will be the same. Another example. Another example. There's a mother teach her parents. Oh, to teach the uh, teach the parents. Teach her <laughs> kids. Okay. If they teach them very well, they get seven out of ten. Or if they didn't open the book, they did seven out of ten. If they didn't have some give them some information. It's getting seven out of ten. So even that the all inputs will be a small zero or nothing or a lot, they get the same. This is how the output will be. What is the input? Could the, the input change? The output is still the same. The output is still the same. Here, if we say this, if you look here, when the input change, the output change. Here, this is the how decreasing. When the input change, the output change. If I'm here at one, the output is nine. If I am at two, the output is seven, as an example. Oh, what? In this, in the decreasing, if I change the input, the output will be changed. In the increasing, but uh, the constant, yes. The constants, if the input change, the output will be the same. This one, we call it constant. But, uh, this means it has what's still yeah. state. It means it has it's fixed. It's fixed. It's fixed. So the constant is fixed. Listen, here. No, no. I mean, like when you put any input, the output is still the same. How it will be? It will be like f of x equals 4, as an example. If the input is 0, the output is four. If the input is one, the output is four. If the input is two, the output is four. If the input is 100, the output is four. I said if the, the input, once you change any input, you put any input, the output is still the same. Like here, if it is zero, zero, sorry, what is the output? Four. If an x is 0, what's the y? If it is x is 1, what's the y? If x is 2, what's the y? This is for what? For the constant function. How the function will be? It will be like f of x equal 4. f of x equals negative 5, and so on. This one, we call it constant function. It doesn't decrease or increase. When it's constant function, look at f of x equals 4. Did you remember now the slope form when you say that f of x equals m x plus b? If I say now b is 4, so what about the value of m? There's no slope. The slope is 0. There's no change. There's no change in the y over x. The slope here is 0. Now, may you ask me, teacher, how the slope is zero? You remember that before. What is the formula of the slope? Y1 minus Y2 over X1 minus Bravo. So, the slope is change of Y over the change of X. Now, take any two points. This one as an example and this one. This one, what is the, give me as an example, it is, here is one, let's make them like, here is one, two, three, four, and five, and then here is six. Now this point, what is the coordinate of this point? Two and four, as an example, two, four. And this one. Five four. So even the input or the x is changed, the output still four. 
Wait. Now, where is the change of y? Where is the y is here? 4 and the second y? 4. So you will say 4 minus over. Where is the x? Minus 2. 4 minus 4? 0. And 5 minus 2? 3. 0 over 3? 0. So that means the slope. Remember that. The slope of the horizontal line must be zero. Yeah, it's always zero, but I just prove you how it's zero. So remember that if the slope, the line is horizontal, the slope will be what? Zero. What kind of this function? Constant function. And even the input change, the output still the same. If it is vertical. So what about the horizontal one? Let's see. Now, this is horizontal. What about the vertical? It will be three over zero. Just a minute. Let's see here. Yes. Now, let's see. Now, if you have now function like this, now. If you have now a vertical one, like this, we say that the horizontal, its slope is what? Z. What about the vertical one? The vertical. Here is four, here is one, two, four, here is negative one, negative two, negative three, and negative four. I want to find the slope now. Where's the slope? It's delta y over delta x. Where are the y's? And first of all, what is the coordinate of the first point? Four, uh, four, four, bravo. And here, four, negative four, bravo. Now, where are the? Where are the y, the change of y? Negative four. No, sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. Negative four and four, so you will see. Negative 4 minus 4 over 4 minus 4. Now, negative 4 minus 4, negative 8. 4 minus 4, 0. In math, there is no, no any number over 0. This one, we call them. And anyway, how it will be? What is the number that you multiply it with 0, you get negative 8? Nothing. So it will be undefined. Two, uh, sorry, same uh, sign. You will add them and they take the negative. Okay, so remember that. If it is vertical, there is no slope. If it is horizontal, the slope of zero. Okay. No, this is, I will not give you an exam, just an extra information. But just we talk about the horizontal, I'm going to just tell you about the vertical. Now, there's nothing undefined. Not, it's unknown. It's, it cannot be found. That's like, like this. Now, the slope determines if the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. How? Look at these examples here. f of x equals mx plus b. This is the standard of the linear function. If the slope is greater than zero, like one positive. Yeah, okay. This one, yes, this one, yes, this one, no. Okay, now, 
if the slope is greater than zero, what do I mean by greater than zero? Positive. Positive. So if the slope is positive, that's mean I have an increasing function. If the slope is less than zero, it means negative. So if the slope is positive, it's going to be increasing. If the slope is less than zero or negative, it's going to be decreasing. And if the slope is zero, it's going to be constant. As we say, now look at these examples here f of x okay let me give you one how do you know look at the number two and i will suggest to alter these questions first before you go right okay number two f of x equals x plus four where is the coefficient of x coefficient of x one bravo one is greater than zero, so it's going to be, which is increasing. Look at the slow, the coefficient of x. One, one is greater than zero. The slope is greater than zero, so it will be increasing. This is for number two. So for number three now. Um, was number three negative two over three x minus two what is the coefficient of x no. the coefficient of x no it's not comfortable where's the one here what is the coefficient of x Coefficient of x, it means the number that is multiplied by x. This is the coefficient of x. What is the number here? Negative 2 over 3. So the coefficient of x is negative 2 over 3. Now, negative 2 over 3, is it greater than 0, less than 0, or equal 0? Less than zero, bravo. If it's the slope is less than zero, so which type of function? Decreasing. Thank you. Why? Why? Teacher, I still didn't understand number three. Why? Why, yeah, hello. Just a minute, just a minute. Why, hello? Why? Yes, we can. Come here, yeah, hello, hello. Come to the board. How do you know if it's increasing, decreasing, or constant? I told you. Look at mx plus two. Look at the function. Where is the what? What is the what do I mean by m? Here it's like m x plus b. M is the coefficient that multiplied by x. Look at x plus 4. What is the number that multiplied by x here? x plus 4. What is the, what is the number that multiplied by x? Which means what? 1. By default, it will be 1. Now, 1. Is it greater than 0, less than 0, or equal 0? So it will be increasing. Yes. Uh, Tamara, see here. Look at three. G of it. Okay, teacher. Ah, oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, teacher. Never mind. M X plus B. Where is the coefficient of X here? Bravo. Negative two out of three. Is negative two out of three greater than zero? Less than zero. It's negative. Bravo. So it's going to be less than zero. If it is less than zero, what type of function? Decreasing. 
Did you finish? Okay. Now, let's talk about now the second characteristic of the linear functions, which is the change behavior. So we talk about the increasing, decreasing of constant. Now let's talk about the end behavior. Now, why I will use the end behavior? The end behavior is to analyze the graph. Okay, what do I mean by the end behavior? Yeah. Oh, it's, oh, yeah. I mean, what I mean by the end behavior? Let's see. Like if you have this graph, just a minute. Look at the red, the red one. You will ask yourself, where the red one are going? So this one we call it what the end behavior. Where are you going? Are you go upward, downward, to the left, to the right, positive infinity, okay. negative infinity, and so on. How will I explain it now? What I will use? I will use the positive infinity over the negative infinity. How I will say? I will say x this one i say x i don't know, positive infinity i read it as x approaches positive infinity x this is x so teacher it uh, if x uh, positive infinity it's increasing and x with negative infinity it's decreasing that's how no let's keep and first of all if i say x if you see this one x you will read it x approaches positive infinity so how you will or how the behavior will be just will be x approaches positive infinity or x approaches negative infinity then if you see as i said here if you see this one you read it as x approaches positive infinity or x goes to positive infinity here x approaches negative infinity this is how the way i will explain i will uh, identify or explain the end behavior of the function now all of you now stop writing and focus with me here now look at the red arrow here. How I will explain? Look at me. Now, look at, just a minute. Now look at the red, the red arrow here. The red arrow, what is it? Is it in the positive x? You know where's the positive x and where's the positive? Now, here is a positive x. Here is the negative x. Here is the positive x and here is the negative x. Up is the positive y and down is the negative y. Positive x and the four here is negative. Now, where is the red one? The red one is between the positive x and the positive y. So what you will say? You will say as x as x approach to positive infinity the y will approach the positive infinity as x approaches to the positive infinity and it is here it is in the first quadrant x is positive and the y is positive so how will explain it you will say as x approach to positive infinity the y go to the positive infinity so you will say as x approach to positive infinity f of x approach to positive infinity there's no stop this is how to oh okay teacher so if it was like down with the um, y-axis if it was uh, the y-axis negative and the axis just a minute for the first case is it clear for the red one yeah teacher why no here is the uh, where is it? It is in the positive x and positive y. So you will say x goes to the positive x, the y goes to the positive y, to the positive infinity. Now the second one, the green one. Look at the green one. 
It's between which axes, yeah, Serene? Negative x and positive y. So whether the chain, the values goes to the negative infinity, the values of y still be upward. Is it clear? Teacher. I want you to understand what do I mean by how I mean. I want to look at this arrow here. Well, this arrow where is it going? It's going to this side, upward. So when the x goes to the negative infinity, when the x is decreased, the value of y still go up. I guess Teacher, this... I just have a question, I'm Maria. Okay, Maria, just a minute, please. Let me continue. Do you understand what I mean? F of x, yeah, yeah. It's f of x, it's a, a, every time it's y. So here, how you will say, if x is going to the negative infinity, where is the x? If it's going to this side, you will say positive infinity. If x go to the left, you will say it to, to the right, to the left. Sorry, it goes to the negative infinity. So as x approaches negative infinity, the y approaches positive infinity. Is it clear? No, not too much. Teacher. Yes, Maria. What's your question? Teacher, my question: If you like, if you like, give us like x approaches to positive uh, infinity. Okay, how? How should we know that if the y can be negative or positive? Because teacher, like, if you according to the location the of the arrow, if the arrow in this quadrant or this quadrant, so you are on the positive y. But if they are down, they are on the negative y. So teacher, you will put an arrow, like you will put an arrow because, like, if you didn't put an arrow, how can we find what is the fx? You must have another. Uh -huh. Okay, teacher, thank you. Now the second one. Now let's go to the red one here. The red one. Where is the red one lies? Is it on the positive x or negative x? Positive x. Is it right? So you will say because it's the positive x, so as x approaches positive infinity. Now look at the y. Where's the y here? It is lies on the positive y or negative y? Positive y. Is it right? So because it's approached the positive y, so you will say f of x approach positive infinity. Clear? Now we go to the green one now. Where's the green one? Is it like, yeah, Julie. Where is the near the green one? Is it lies on the positive or negative x? Where is it? Negative x. So you will say x approaches negative infinity. Is it clear, Hala? Because I saw that. Aramia, Samara. The next one. Now, where is the the green y? Is it lies on the positive or negative y? Negative, negative y. So you will say f of x goes to the negative. Is it clear now? Yes. Now here, this one. Yeah. The red one. Yes, yeah, hello. The red one. Where it lies? It is on the positive x or negative x? Positive x. So as x goes to the positive infinity. And y? So it goes to the infinity. The uh, Ramim, the green one. Okay, and for y and f of x? Infinite. Thank you. Here, here. I want, I give you now the end behavior, and you want to tell me where it will be. If x approach to positive infinity, f of x approach to negative infinity. In which quadrant? Can you tell me? Come to the board. Okay, I'll Bravo, thank you. So look at here, x approach to positive infinity. So I'm here. The y goes downward to the negative infinity. So here it will be the bar. Is it clear? Yes, Julie, the second one. Bravo. Is 
Teacher, it's so easy. Now, here, you know that the functions cannot come like this. The functions will be like this. Increasing, decreasing, and so on. Look at these examples here. Look at f of x equals x. Who can explain now for me? Yeah, yeah, Tamara. Yeah, Tammy, Tammy. Here, when f of x approaches to bravo. So I will write it. When you want to write the end behavior for the function, you write like this. When f of x goes to the positive. Yeah, f of x equals x. It's like one, one, two, two, three, three. So no, it's like this. <laughs> f of x equals x like one, one, two, two, zero, zero. So it goes like this. It's not constant. Constant, if you say f of x equals four, equals number. This is constant. So here, look at me. Where is this function goes? Where is approach? Where is the end behavior of this function? When x approach, when allow will you say it? You will say if f of x goes to positive infinity, x will be to the positive. Oh, sorry. If f approach to positive infinity, x approach to positive. Infinity. So first you will start with f of x, then and look down here. Where is the where is that negative infinity and here negative infinity? So when f of x approaches negative infinity, x approaches negative. negative infinity. So this is so if you look at the function now up to now, you can tell me if it's increasing or decreasing, and you tell me about the end behavior of the function. Okay. The slope, look at here. I'm here. You go upward. You go from left to right. So the slope is what? Positive. Yes. Now, so up to now, when you, I want you, like as an example, you look at the board, this door, you will say it's rectangle, it's paint. You give me the characteristic of the properties of this board, of this dorsal. Here is the same. When you look at the linear function, you can explain for me. This is increasing, this is decreasing. Where is the domain? Where is the range? Where is the end behavior? Later on, we'll talk about the y-intercept, the zeros, the mix, the maximum, the minimum, and so on. So how I will explain it? By looking at the end behavior and the increasing and decreasing up. Now look at the second one here. F of x equals negative x. Like if f is 1, a y is negative 1. If x is 2, y is negative 2, and so on. The slope is negative, so it will be decreasing function. How I know that the slope is negative? What's the coefficient of x? Negative 1. So the slope is negative. Agree? Agree? Now, how can I say the end behavior here? How you tell me about the end behavior? The coefficient of x is what? Negative. Too slow. Negative. The coefficient of x is negative. So it means what? Okay, which is the negative the slope is negative. It will be decrease or increase. Okay. Yes, Yanada. Tell me about the end behavior for the function. As f of x go to infinity. Bravo. Down. Yes, stop. Real. Okay, good. Here. F of X approach to. Yes, the bravo. Now, if you remember when I as X approach to positive infinity goes to negative infinity, negative infinity, positive infinity. Now, did you remember 
over here, when I told you about the decreasing and increasing, where are, uh, it's clear. In the increasing, both of them are up, or both of them, or both of them are positive, both of them are negative. Look here, they have two positive, or two, uh, the input and output are going upward, the input are output and, here. Ah, sorry, sorry, here, here, I'm here. They, they are increasing. What are the sense? Positive, positive, or negative, negative. If they are increasing, if they are decreasing, one is negative, one is positive. One is positive, one is negative. I told you that if it is decreasing, when the output increase, the, the, the input will be what? Decrease. They are the opposite direction. One is positive, one is negative. But they are increasing. They are both of them have the same direction. Positive, positive, or negative. Okay. You will say if X goes from, I will tell you about this. If x goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, how oh, I can say if f of x will be two if x approach to negative infinity, or if x approach to positive infinity, f of x it will be two. I will tell you about the huh? oh, Okay. As I said, hello. We start at what? At 10, 22. No, it's at 10, 22. Let's solve this one. Here now, for which two functions does f of x approach to positive infinity as x approach to positive infinity? Hello. Here. Which function? I'll look at the first function. If the first function, f of x approach to positive infinity, so x approach to positive infinity, true or false? Which one? Yes, and x approach to positive infinity. The first one, yeah, true or false? Why? Bravo. Since the slope is positive, so here. The slope is positive. Why it's positive? The coefficient is positive. So since the slope is positive, so there it will be increasing because it's increasing. So when f of x goes or approach to positive infinity, x approach to positive infinity. The second one. Yes, yes, Julia. Here. Teacher, can I answer? Hello, here, which one? If the slope is negative. So if the slope is negative, so it's increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. So the decreasing, how the end behavior will be? Okay, if, as an example, f of x goes to a positive infinity, x approach to where? Negative infinity. Right, thank you. Yes, Maria. Yes, teacher. Okay, yes. so it's the first one, it's positive, and the next one is negative. So the answer would be, I don't know. Just a minute, just but, a minute. The slope of h of x, is it positive or negative? Oh, teacher, yes. Okay. Sorry, teacher, my father's phone rang, uh, rang at me. Sorry, okay, it's complete. Okay. The slope is positive or negative? The slope is positive. Positive. Increasing or decreasing? Uh, increasing. Increasing. How the behavior will be? Um, fx and it's positive. X approach to where? And x is uh, negative. So also which two positive. functions? They are the first one and the last. Teacher, you see here there's a subtraction sign. This is no look at this. This will tell you. Yeah. 
this my intercept is no don't look at it oh, okay so it's from the equation it's not from the number from the coefficient multiplied by x Okay, teacher, yes. thank you for letting me answer. This is the difficult one. Yeah, this is why intercept. It means that it is zero. Yeah, it's that class from zero. Teacher, what if one of them was negative and the other was positive? What can be the answer? Increasing or decreasing? Sorry? Like if you see here, maybe, maybe, I don't know. If like you have two X and then like negative two, okay. And then what's the, like the slope, what is it gonna be? Negative or positive? If you have a negative minus number two? or a positive number? Two X minus two? Yes, two X minus two. Okay. Well, what is the slope? Tell me. Okay, teacher, so I cannot decide because there's negative and there's a positive. No, yeah. If you have 2x minus 2, where is the coefficient of x? Coefficient of x is 2. So this is the slope. This one you oh, need to so is it positive so or negative? Only the coefficient of x, then it is going to be the uh, slope? slope yes okay okay teacher, thank you we know that tomorrow we'll have to finish all of this yeah let's go to the zero so easy. Yeah. What is a zero of the function? The zero of the function where zero of the function if f of x equals zero. Where where is if f of x equals zero? At what? When it's equal. When the line is on x. Y intersplice on x, bravo. So it means what? Zero of the function, it means the x intercept. Okay. okay. Will you find the zero of the function? It means where is the value or at which value of x? F of x will be zero. Okay. Zero of a function, it means at which values of x? f of x will be zero look at the first graph here how can you find the zero of f here is f and here is g okay for f how do you find the zero of f where is the zero of f at which point negative two bravo here is the zero function at where at the y x intercept so you will say at x equals negative two yes Okay, thank you. Tell me, thank you. Is it it's wrong? Why? Right. Yes. I think it's no. Let's continue. Now here, the zero of a function. It means where it is the value of x. Julie, what is the value of x makes f of x equals zero? Okay, what does it mean? Zero of a function, it means the x intercept. Where is the point? Exactly, where is the point? 
that is whatever the point will be the value of x the f of x will be zero yeah it means the x intercept it's a lot here now this point exactly now the second one for g where are you going sit down the second one where is the zero the zero the zero the zero of g it's six. six. Yes, teacher, it's six. And the way x is six. No, I'm talking about g of x. Down, down, down. No, I'm let's see. Yes. Here, when x is ten. Now, uh, no, sorry, ten. Stop. Sorry, now. Stop. Just a minute. Did you help him? I didn't understand. From the graph, yeah. My Maria. Look at. Now, teacher, the graph is G of for x. And now, from the table, yeah. Of G of x equals zero. What's the value of x? Ten. Ten. I still don't get it, teacher. How? How what? How did you get 10? Eh? How did you get 10? That's my question. I told you when f of x or g of x equals 0, what are the values of x? 10. 10, that's it. Hello, see, stop, for the first graph here, you told me that the 0 is negative 2. What is the y intercept? He told me that the zero is negative two. Yeah. What is the y intercept here? Six ground. Here, the y intercept yeah, at six. Which function has the greater zero? Ten. Yeah, zero. Okay. Oh, okay, teacher, thank you. I understood it now.